Greetings, my friends. I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for rejoining me here in TNO, playing as a Kingdom of England. Now, last time, we struggled a little bit, and we had a couple difficult decisions, but this isn't where we left off yesterday, because I basically restarted the campaign, because there was a small, minor patch or update to the game, so I figured, you know what, we might as well play with it, because yesterday, I asked you guys whether I should give myself give myself some political power, some PP, to, because we weren't having a good time. So, as you can tell, uh, well, the... Himmler, or HMMLR, took over the East Midlands. Go figure. The North is relatively weakened, and they've actually been really concentrating in the middle section here, which is kind of surprising, but, you know, it is what it is. Also, I asked you guys whether I should give myself some PP, like I said earlier, and you guys m mostly said yes, so basically, I didn't have to do that, and I didn't, but, uh, I just restarted the game. So basically, I, I gunned for guns. I went for guns as fast as possible, as much as possible, because right now, we still have no relations, but whatever. Anyways, let's do our next focus, because we just finished the Garrison Groves, and I want to get to that Civil War as fast as possible. Locate the snake's head. There's someone behind all this. The Resistance leader is organizing everything behind the scenes. He's behind these activities and will inevitably strike again. We need to shut, hunt him down and kill him. Without his leadership, the Resistance will fall apart and we will have averted a terrible catastrophe. Eliminate the bastard and we shall have won if we can find where he is. Good, good, good. So, uh, there was another comment yesterday as well, from the last video, of course. Uh, like, how to say, what was it, some of these uh, more English words that, as an American, I would not completely understand. Like, Lancashire, I think. Something like that. Yorkshire? I say Yorkshire, but... Yorkshire? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't, I, I'm, I don't think that's the way we pr you guys pronounce it in England, if you guys live in England. Ooh, we got some research to do as well. Also, I did change something different. Uh, we have actually have a lot more debt now. But that is because I max out construction. I just like, nope. If we're going to spend money, we might as well spend it and make our children pay it off later on. And our grandchildren to pay this off later on. Because we don't like them. So basically, we've got a lot of civilian factories in Sussex. And we're trying to maybe get a factory out in London. So I decided, just screw it. Just put all the debt onto our children. <sighs> That's always going to turn out very great for all of us. Going to love it. Also, so we come back here. Now, they've been doing a really good job getting a lot more support down here, which is a little surprising. There was another comment from yesterday, though, saying, instead of just doing the monthly support, unless it's, like, really high for the enemy, just do the, uh, the chunk here, the two and a half chunk, percent chunk instead. Even though I did an Oxford chart, and it's actually doing really, really well for us. I'm going to keep doing that one there, just because it's so good for us. Uh, so, uh, yeah, pretty much is going pretty well. Sussex has never flipped. Obviously, as you can tell, some of these other states have. Let's see. One per oh, that's... That's not good. We gotta really chunk that down. West Midlands isn't bad. Severn is not bad. So that's our only little spot. I've been doing Newcastle as well. So it is what it is. Yeah. Non existent. We still have a thousand guns, which is nice, but. No relations. We do have 20 XP, though. Or 20 PP, though. It's not bad. We talked to German politicians. We could, but we're not gonna do that. And we shall have not enough time. Germany has descended into chaos. Would be Hitlers have sprouted up all over and they're fighting each other. It is clear that no aid will now come from the Reich save for a few aimless soldiers in the Plymouth garrison. The rebels know this as well. There's no greater opportunity for them. All their planning, all their plots and preparation. They will use it now, for there will be no other time when we are so weak. Oh, terror for the sake of love. Uh, the hour of our greatest test must come. Well, we'll see what happens. If the Civil War actually spawns because of this focus, because I still left Court the Moderates, a radical a day, a shaky compromise, a plea to Germany investigate the military. So basically everything that we've done yeah, that we didn't do, I still haven't done. So, it is what it is. But I do like seeing 52 factories. Kaya, elected Prime Minister of Japan. And kind of a stretch. Also, Italy in this in this campaign won the war down here, even though these guys still turned communists. In the last video, when the other campaign, basically, Turkey won, but it doesn't really matter at all. Uh, Russia is still in Battle Royale mode, even though Tomsk is looking pretty good. Hmm. What do you think? And... If you've played TNO, or if you've seen a lot of other people play TNO, what do you think is the most interesting Russian nation to play as? Because I've played as Vyatka, and that was a lot of fun. That's actually a lot of fun, even though they had like no manpower at all times. Vyatka was a great deal of fun. What do you think, though, would be another nation, or really the top three nations? How about top three nations in Russia to play as? Because I want to keep these guys in mind, because I want to play a lot of Russia, because there's so many different states. Hopefully someone says the Siberian Black Army because that looks incredibly interesting. Probably someone's going to say the Western Russian Revolutionary Front, which looks really good as well. And maybe someone else. Maybe Omsk. I've heard they're pretty cool. Or Komi. I've heard Komi is just messed up and fun. 
What is Operation George? Field Marshal will not be there. Veltshire has to have a stuff above 75. Where is Veltshire? Oh, Shire. Cashier? Shear. Viltshire. Is it Viltshire? Wiltshire. Wiltshire. Maybe. I don't know. Not enough time. Does everything fall apart yet? Well, doesn't look like it. So, court the moderates. Operation White Ship sounds like fun. The moderates are the largest faction of the royal party. Here, heirs to the conservative old god that have long been guardians of the English tradition. As a rule, they tend to support the status quo, lest the consequences of bringing it spill over onto the English people. But now, with the status quo changing of its own accord following the rise of Himmler, we need to convince that them that the change is needed. It will be difficult, but the moderates seek the survival of our nation above all else and will fall in line on this matter. Money directed at the projects they suggest will not find its way into the pockets of the corrupt. It will be spent as directed and as needed. Well, hopefully. You never know. And I'm just kind of waiting to get up to here. East Anglia has to have above 60, which is fine because it has 70, so good. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. 20%, that's pretty good for us. Nice. Nice. That's, that's a ton of support down there. Wiltshire. I think we're doing okay there. Good. Keep knocking this down. Knock them down. Knock them down. What do you do to people that you don't like? You knock them down. <laughs> knock them down. <laughs> uh, only, only if. That's okay, though. Cool. And now we have 880 guns. Yeah, I just focus on guns so hard. Just like nothing but guns. Guns, 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 guns. Because nothing says England like having a lot of guns. We need to get some early mo motorized as well. We keep making a lot of civilian factories, which I like. Because this will help later on, but... Man. Debt is but a number. Uh -huh. I still don't know, I think. Reach out, German German Reach out to German politicians, yeah. We have to get enough political power. What, what, what was I going to look at? I forget exactly. I'm going to see something here. I've never done run a pro-packed media campaign. That looks really cool. But that takes just so much. Just so much. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. Like, I said this yesterday. I still don't understand where these other expenditures are going. Like, I guess this is like a tribute to Germany because they won the war still, and it's even though it's 63. I suppose I can kind of see that they still demand money from us. Like, I could see that maybe. Um, I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. I really don't know. Ah, uh, court the moderates, good. And a radical a day. A plea to Germany. We go gain guns. Let's do that one. Investigate the military. Even within. Our talk of unity and reform for the voters, there's one place that we cannot have at light hand. The military has escaped suspicion for talk far too long. It should have been obvious from the start. Those old minds stuck in the past. We shall search high and low, throughout the officers and enlisted alike. We may lose some t great talents, but we must reroute every single traitor from our ranks. An order wing at will be lost. Ooh, a white ship. They lose guns, and we gain guns. I like that. I like white ships. I like ships in general. I guess white ships are kind of cool, though. East Anglia, hmm. Ah, oh, but East Midlands, ooh, they did a really good job there. But they completely lost the North, like, that, that's ridiculous. They chose them the Midlands instead of the North. Yeah, I don't know, I, I probably would have stuck with Scotland. But I will play as uh, the Resistance someday, I'm not sure when. I know, I don't think, so, because so, one of the other comments from the last video, someone asked me if England was completely done, I want to say no, because I'm sure there's always things that they could add in. They probably aren't going to take a look at England for a very long time now, just because one of the most recent updates was about England here, which is awesome. So, but it's probably going to be a while before they really address England. Don't quote me on that, just because I'm, I'm not on the mod team, I don't know. But I'm just going to assume that because, well, they did a lot of good work on England. A lot of it. Uh, do this a shop. Oh, what do we need for this bottom one here? Operation George. Vilt Kashir. I don't know, I'm probably saying that wrong. There we go. More stability. Less than 20% down there. Nice. Less than 15% down there. And they almost... Well, they really wanted to get London, but, you know, whatever. So, basically... Oh, Operation George. Um, you know what? We got the guns. We got those 250 guns from the other thing, so we might as well, right? Might as well. Uh, oh! Oh, boy. They got, they got that province. That's not good. Well, we'll lower that next time. So, basically, you have to go through this entire tree first before the Civil War starts, or at least that's what it seems like. Actually, Operation in the North would have been really interesting. I'm not sure what Wilhelm would have done, but that's okay. Play to Germany for more guns. A radical day. That sounds like fun. 
Ah, oh, good. So, a radical a day. A radical a day keeps the revolution away will be our new motto. The public will be convinced that although we seek to unite the nation, we will not tolerate traitorous activities. Whenever we capture one of these traitors, we shall broadly have set for the whole nation to see. Their faces shall be known. Their crimes shall be heard. Their punishments shall be seen far and wide. Good. Trait. A radical a day keeps the traitors away. Hmm. We could still continue to reach out to German politicians, but... We are okay for now. Oh, engineer company too. Good. Let's get some... Okay, motorized. It's it's way past due to get that, so... Hopefully we have enough guns before the Civil War starts. I mean, we do get a few more guns from our focus, but... Oh, that budget. Why do you hurt me so much? Wait, what is... Okay. And I do have a cup of coffee. Nice English coffee. Not bad. Enjoying with our cat Pinky. Or my cat Pinky. Laying in the sunshine. Enjoying the warmth. Very good, very good. Research wise, uh, I got like two, more than two months for these guys. Factory wise, I mean, we've. I've like put like five civilian factories down here in Sussex this entire time since I started playing this campaign again. Um, so we're doing really well. We're actually doing very, very well. I will probably cut the construction budget eventually. But as we've already established, it won't matter too much. Alright, my apologies about that, everyone. Uh, apparently, Hoi 4 crashed, but then it was okay. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, Windows came up and said, Hoi 4 has crashed, but it didn't. So, it is what it is. A radical a day, how about that? A shaky compromise or a plea to Germany? Let's go to a plea to Germany just to get some more guns just in case. Albert Speer is an inf influential man in German politics. He is one of the Führer's most trusted advisors. He is similarly to Macmillan, noted for leading the reformist wing of the nation's premier political party and some feels as a natural successor to the world's most powerful man. Macmillan heads to Germania now. The city Speer designed brick by brick and negotiated a treaty with, with more favorable to England. Rumor has it, he also goes to see if England might have a future in the pact as that is an arrangement of equals more than that of subordinates. Time shall tell if it succeeds. And let's get rid of these scoundrels in Wiltshire. Wiltshire. I am not that English. Maybe a quarter, maybe, but uh, I'm very American. And y'all doing all this English stuff, man, all I know is about, they got teas and biscuits. All right, I gotta stop talking like that now. Uh, let's see. Mm, I still don't like that. They're, that monthly increase is really bad for us, but you know what? If they only have one province, that's not bad for us. Because Newcastle's looking mighty bad for them. Now we've got two areas of support here, so that's not too bad. We need to get to at least, like, was it 60, I think? Or 70, maybe it was 70. God dang. 76. Yeah, they really left the East Midlands. But everywhere else, it's kind of like, hmm. We'll see what happens. Oh, we actually have 100 political power, wow. Yeah, go and grab them guns first, that's fine. And we're still trying to train, even though it's actually hurting us quite badly, so go ahead and stop. <laughs> Our soldiers are out of equipment and firearms. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, that sucks. And I don't I don't know why they made the Honorable Artillery Division, like, or company. Like, what is this supposed to be? I, I, I really don't understand. I mean, I love, like, artillery-only campaigns. I still need to try one at the time of this recording, but... I don't know. Let's see, we can bribe garrisons. We tried that before. Didn't work out so well. You know what? Well, maybe we'll run a pro-packed media campaign. Once we get through this focus, we'll do one that gives us political power next. How about that? Let's try that. And there we go. So, a shaky compromise. Macmillan is a fool, unaware of the wrath his reforms would bring upon us. Chesterton is worse, almost treacherous in the desire to bow to German might. The moderate wing has led England through thick and thin these past decades, and it shall be they who once more step up to the task of preserving England, whatever the more misguided other people may think. Home and Margaret Thatcher will work together to ensure this, a partnership that will provide salvation to England, that from which would menace her, while also keeping her independence from untrustworthy allies. Yes, good. Oh, wait, wait, did that give us political power? It does. There's only two left, so they both give us political power, which is nice. Very good. Yeah, I'm probably going to do the monthly thing here, because they keep getting more support, which is insane. I'd love to get more support somewhere else, too, though. Oh, a little bit of lag. Please don't crash, Hoi 4. Please don't crash. They have a lot of support, a lot of moderate support every, in a lot of places, except Yorkshire, which is kind of nice. Oh, there we go. Good. Keep decreasing it for them. They don't need it where they're going. 70. I've got to lower it just by a little bit at least. Good. Less than 10% in Oxfordshire. Great. Less than 20% in there. Good. 
Oh, Amur's gone. Right. Good. We only have 620 guns, but that's okay. That's hopefully okay. I, we don't ever get paid either. Uh, what is our income? None. Hmm. Not good. Cat military spending. Iberian assets creation of Iberian Council. A step in the right direction. Uh, do we actually make a factory? We might have made actually actually made a made a factory because our construction or military spending has gone up a little bit more, huh? Even though we can't produce anything at all, which really sucks. Which really really sucks. A shaky compromise. Jolly good. Let's run a pro packed media campaign. And we shall do request additional forces. Cornwall has a surplus of armed men concentrated in a small area. This is both a waste of time and surprising or supremely inefficient when it comes to dealing with Himmler. We cannot directly raise too many more English regiments, but if Hadler were to lend us his men, we would not need to. As an added bonus, if we were to send these soldiers into the more dangerous of situations, and they were, tragically killed in action, we would not be spending valuable English blood on the matter. So the government really couldn't give away. It's a win-win situation. Either Halder refuses and we can complain to the Germanians, or he can accept us, or when we're one step closer to freeing our island. Or just freeing our land. You know what? We're doing that as well. We could do that, but until I see, like, this... Oh! Oh, God. Hitler's dead. Oh, my God. Well, I'm glad we did those, uh, trips over there to uh, Hitler before he died. That was actually probably a smart move to take. <laughs> you know what? Uh, once that is done, I'm gonna go ahead and do this, or do this very soon. Ah, do it anyways. It takes five, four days anyways. Hopefully we can see some, uh, things happen over here. I'd like to see an explosion. Oh, uh-oh. Wow, that was fast. That was really fast. Oh boy. Oh, Speer and his men are moving around. Ballman, what's going on? What are you doing, Ballman? Please don't crash, wait for it. Please don't crash. Hey, we got low relations, actually. Oh, uh, we could grab more guns. It won't really matter much, but... You know what? We might as well. Hey, look at that! Germany is completely uh, devoid of uh, military stuff, right? Also, the game is lagging. I, I tried to pause it, but... The game is completely standstill for right now. Ah, the German Civil War. The end of the Reich, surely. Ah, beautiful. So even if you get more influence, it doesn't really matter too much. Thus, it is thus necessary that the individual should finally come to realize that his own ego is of no importance in comparison with the existence of the nation. And by nation, people. You know what? Even if they get more, like I was saying, if they even get more influence, it doesn't matter at all. It really doesn't. Hmm. It's free civilian factories. Wow, we actually, wow. Hmm. I kind of want to build up some roads. But factories are where it's at, so. Good build up Cornwall, even though we can't use them. Let's go there. This military factory, even though we probably won't be able to use it, will come along in 64. But that's okay. Alright, things should be happening. Not bad, not bad. Well, hopefully, Hadrish does not win, because that would prove to be very bad for everyone. And this is probably the last time we can actually do stuff like this, so. Almost f only 5% support down there. 80? God dang, that's a lot of support. 80? Jeez, they really went for that those Midlands. Uh, halfway in Yorkshire. Very good. Yorkshire. 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 Hmm. 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 Can I do this? I know we last time we were we delayed a little bit on London. Maybe not. Chaos and Auslan. All right, divided. I would love to eventually play uh, some other states as well. I really hope someday like Auslan gets its own focus, like a lengthy focus tree, because I think that'd be awesome. I hope all the Rex Commissariats get their own focus trees. To be honest with you, because I I really want to see if I can like change history, and, like just do whatever. I I want the general government where Poles used to live to be a focus tree, like have a very awesome, unique one. Maybe someday, but I think that'd be so cool. I think that'd just be amazing. Small gun shipment, we might not get those now. That sucks, but whatever. You know, things happen. And the English Civil War begins. We have finally gotten to it, and it looks about like what I thought it would be. So, even before the, before the German Civil War broke out, there had been an increasing number of incidents designed to provoke our police or break down law and order in England. Evidently, the German Civil War only escalated the depravity of the terrorists carrying out these acts as they have grown more brazen and bold in their attempts to undermine our government. We thought that we might be able to keep things under control. We thought that these incidents, however frequent, would not aspire onto the open. We thought we could avoid the coming war. We were spectacularly wrong. Today, after a brief radio message, a general uprising amongst the population and various militia units has taken place. The first shots were fired in York. It was armed in almost New York, but just New York, not New York. 
York. As armed and organized partisans massacred the local garrison and declared themselves the government governing authority. Furthermore, atrocious incidents have conglomerated the partisans' hold on the free England. Our initial response has been chaotic, and disorganization is rampant among our divisions. The only advantage that we have is the use of our opposition is just to be as likely disorganized. We must actively to consolidate our hold on as many areas as possible. Wherever assistance we can get from our allies, reluctant and otherwise, must be called upon now. Our enemies will likely do the same. The North has always been a hotbed for support of Himmler, and so it is likely that the resistance will be strongest there. We may have to give up some territory to save the rest. The Midlands are wavering, and we will have to see which way the tide turns there. We must hold London as a seat of government and our legitimacy. Losing it would be a devastating blow to our side. We must tread carefully as we seek to squash this rebellion. The communist and social side of risen against us would see England turn into a wasteland rather than continuing cooperation with the Germans. We will hold them back. In return, England safely to stability and peace under leadership for the good of all. For king and country. Good. Alright, so this is actually a little bit worse than I think. Eh, it's not that much worse. All we have to get is Northampton. And we do probably pretty well, actually. So you're one group. Right there. Oops. So all y'all going to be under a field marshal of Montgomery. And looks like we're all really, really well equipped. So then this other group. Uh, let's see. I want you guys to come here as well. I'm splitting the rest of these guys up. Jeffrey Baker, you guys are just going to defend the north. Because my plan is to cut the guys in the middle off. So you guys do that. You guys just hold there. You guys hold right there. And the rest of these soldiers will help defend down here. So like you and you. Because you're actually going to come to this group as well. Uh, Let's see. Yes, that'll be good. Is, is he an infantry leader? Yes, he is. I'm glad I looked. Does anyone have upgrades, actually? Uh, you. Yes. I already did upgrade some of these guys off-screen before I started recording, so that's okay. Uh, if you could, uh, get up to Northampton and unite with these guys, and then we we're going to try to figure out how to kill these guys off, because they do have a port over here. No? Oh, they do have a port over here, which really sucks. Cut these guys off. That would be great. Twelve divisions here. Um, hmm. Well, see what we can do. You three... Good luck. Oh, wait, 12? Oh, these guys wanted to come down. I'm just gonna hang out for now. If we can get in there before they can do anything, that'd be great. Ah, oh, expansion in Africa. Interesting. Oh, the Poles. Ah, Poland's there. Hey, look at that. Not Nova Polska, which desperately needs a focus tree. But it's Poland. Nice. Alright, we're getting closer. Don't let it move. Come on, you should be almost there. Good! The Warsaw Uprising, cool. We have anti-tank equipment, great. Hey, we can actually produce stuff now! Isn't that awesome? We can actually produce stuff. It's so good. Also, I completely ignored my land doctrine, which means the enemy has completely ignored their land doctrine, so that's actually very good. Oh, do they? They don't have a port, so actually go ahead and try to kill these guys off as fast as possible. Divide and conquer as best we can. Actually, they have a port right there, that sucks. So, you guys gotta come this way. Good luck. Um, if they don't want to port there, that's fine with me. Actually, I want you guys to go that way. Civil War, civil, the English Civil War has begun. If I could speak, that would be jolly good. Just hold the line in the north. Good. Cambridge would be nice as well. But that's okay. Uh, if they're going to completely abandon their ports, I am totally A-OK -okay with that. Oh, they want to expand up north. Which, I don't blame them, but still. Gunship is successful, jolly good, and the regrets. Harold McMillan slumped down into his leather chair defeated. It has been a rather long day, and all he needed to do was to have a cool drink and some sleep. What a bunch of arrogant crackpots. The so-called resistance was going to scourge this country for a second time. Also, the Germans could burn it again after three months of their civil war ended. He would sooner be called a bald-headed striped lizard than be called friendly to the Germans. There's more to running a country than being on the right side of history. Say what you like about Douglas Home, but at least he was going in the right direction. For England to move towards freedom and autonomy, England had to be a country in the first place. He took a sip of brandy. He remembered the days before the war, the real war, and how simple things were when everyone was on the same side. Things were not so black and white anymore. Our side is to work with the most damned people on God's good earth, and their side wanted to spark a war with those damned people that they which really lose. He wanted to see England freed, and thought long and hard about joining with the resistance at the start. But the consequences for England would have been too much to bear. Idiots everywhere, from Chesterton to the Bolsheviks. England had to be saved from itself in order to save itself. Perhaps, perhaps he could maybe be the one to do it, though. First things first, though, this war had to be won to stop a catastrophe from befalling Britain. Then we'll see about the rest. Fall England, hidden heroes. Great minds of a generation working from the dock. 
These guys are quite a, quite uh, the bumbling ignoramuses, I guess I would say. Because we really need Bristle. Keep everyone pinned down, but Bristle's like the main thing. Africa Shield, very good. And, uh, yeah. Himla is definitely going crazy. Oh. Oh god, what is this? Territory of the military commander in Serbia versus Serbian National Liberation Front. Alright, cool. And Burgundy is looking pretty darn awesome. Alright guys, good luck. Good luck. Three English rabble rousers shall be terminated within the next week. And Serbs rise up. Gamers rise up in the east. Oh my goodness, yeah, that looks terrible. Yep, that looks pretty terrible. Donut seizes Crimea, which is pretty normal. And these guys can't really do much. They're attacking us in no Nottingham. Kind of cool. Never been. Hopefully, we can go someday. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Come on, guys. Take Bristol, and everything else will fall apart for them. We don't. Oh, actually, we do have a little bit of fuel. Just probably stop training then. I'm going to use the subs. Why don't you do this? No sign regions? Oh. There you go. Try that. See what you can do. Then the Rex Commissariat no vegan. South African War. Cool, if you want to read that, go right ahead. The dominoes shall stop. I wonder if we could raid them. That'd be kind of cool. But we got Bristol, so I guess not anymore. Oh, well, whatever. Oh, and they started really attacking us here. That's not good. Um. Well, honestly, the main thing that matters is we kill these guys down here. That's all I really care about right now. A long day. Despite the massive unrest and open conflict, the people of England do not believe a mass casualty event because of the aerial bombing was possible in the conflict. The rebels lacked the aircraft to launch an attack from the air, and even if they did scrounge up a few aircraft, it was nowhere near the numbers needed to launch an attack on scale the Luftwaffe unleashed on Britain during the war. The news came out of Plymouth. Somehow, a group of bombers obtained by the rebels had appeared over the city and had dropped makeshift incendiary bombs near the dockyards. Bathed in diesel and set alight by phosphorus, the firestorm had overwhelmed the fire department there and led to a massive catastrophe. With the garrison was showing up, the English government already reminded many of the London reminded many of London a few years before, and the rumors had it much worse. The government tried to censor any news of the disaster, but the story was already widespread. Mass panic and fear just laid underneath the surface of the population. In the end, the only thing to keep the population with ease was action, as the makeshift shelters were dusted off and the air raid sirens were restored. England would have to put up with aerial bombardment as they had once before. Now we prepare for the inevitable again. I really don't want to use planes, because I want to use my ships, even though ships aren't really that helpful in this mod at all, really. But that's okay. Yeah, no, not you're not getting stuff. Just if you lose it, it's okay. No worries. No worries. We're just gonna make sure you don't get your pension. That's all. If we have to abandon hole for now, that's fine. We'll get it back. Trust me. The reinforcements from the south shall endure. With us. Good. Just kind of hang out for now. Don't worry about it. Alright, kill these guys off. Sometimes we gotta give up a little territory to, to win the war. That's not good. Come on, come on. It shouldn't take this long, but you know. That's what happens when you get English police doing the work for everyone. Alright, throw a gun to him. One big ol' uh, front line. So we've lost 5,000 versus 41,000, that's not bad. We have definitely maybe up to 10 more divisions than the enemy. And we still don't focus. A force of darkness. Well, I didn't know this. More attack on core territory. More weekly manpower promises a change. Legitimate government, nice. A brutal wall. And no focus stream. That is a little concerning. Just a little bit. Not too much, but just a little bit. Cool. Cassell, led by Montgomery. Good luck. Oh, we don't have any IFVs. We started the game with some IFVs, some infantry fighting vehicles. But it looks like they went bye-bye. If we could win here and just push over here, we can encircle two more divisions. That'd be so nice. There you go. Good, good, good. Oh, that GDP hurts me. Uh, actually... Oh, we actually have to have some growth! We barely have any... We don't even have a million dollars. Well, that's not bad. Invested GDP, which did nothing. Literally nothing for us. Ah, <laughs> oh, that hurts me emotionally. That's okay. Actually, what do we need to make? We're doing pretty well so far. We got plenty of guns. Not bad. Pretty good. Alright, so they've abandoned that. That's good. Help them out. Uh, we might be able to attack up here as well. Send you guys, send you guys. Send all but, like, two to go right there. Send all but two to go right there as well. See what can happen, you know. Double attacks, please. Thank you, thank you very much. And eventually we'll break over here to encircle this division in Nottingham. we got a lot of political power. 
This mod really gives you a lot of political power. I'm not really sure what to do with it, but you know, it is what it is. Did you talk yourself out? A long bloody day. The prize. It has been hours since the second platoon, Company B, has been surrounded in the little hamlet of Drummersdown. They had resisted bravely against the collabs, but the bastards just had too many men and too many shells. Half of Lieutenant Dreyer's platoon was already being taken casualties, and the rest were holed up in this awful two-story house. They were down to a magazine each, and some lower than that. A corporal came up running. He had blood running down his face from a gash in his cheek. Order, sir. We've pinned down. We're pinned down, and they're advancing on the south. Door shoppish. Good lord, corporal. You should get yourself checked out. Afraid the medic is... Ooh, San Marco A. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Afraid the medic is quite busy, sir. What are we going to do, sir? <laughs> uh, Lieutenant Side. The only thing we can do, corporal, I'm afraid there's nothing for it. Check for a bedsheet in one of the rooms, the towel otherwise. A little corporal hesitated for a moment. Yes, yes sir. Right away. Minutes later, the gunfire had stopped thudding into the siding, and the remaining ten men of the second platoon were that were uninjured were sitting on the lawn, prisoners of the bloody collabs. It was there that Lieutenant Dreyer noticed the collab weeping over one of his compatriots. The man's best childhood friend, perhaps. An old pal from the university, a brother, who sighed, one day this awful war will be over, and there will be no more fields full of bodies. He was proud of the job that his lad has done, but was rather sickening to see the work up close. The collab also had taken what looked to be 200 casualties by his estimate. The lieutenant watched the crying man get up, tears streaming down his face. He watched as he drew a pistol. He watched the flash as he fired. He heard a sickening crunch to his left. He sat in a shop as more pop, bangs, and rattles went off all around him. Finally felt all the wind knocked out of him, and he slumped to the ground. The corporal's glassy eyes stared into his, into his as the whole world went dark. Word will get out. What is the price you are willing to pay for success? They really don't like me here. <laughs> they really don't. It's like almost more like in a civil war situation or something here. Help these guys out. We gotta defend better. And take these guys out too. These guys will defend to the last. They were holed up in a house. So we'll see what happens. Good. Good. Oh, I could have actually taken out York and surrounded Hull. It's actually would have been probably pretty good. Instead of doing that, do it over here. There you go. A long day. Revenge for Drummersdale. The soldiers didn't really stand a chance. Assault by Sterling's boys was well planned and well executed. Even though I think I got rid of Sterling. Houses were swarmed with grenades and utterly pl uh, some machine guns with rockets being used against their more stubborn positions. The little town of Myerskow was in theirs in an hour, but they were not there to take the town. Sterling's boys were offered bodies plain and simple. All the prisoners walking, wounded, half dead, were pushed and prodded towards an open field into or into single rooms. On a colonel's whistle, the shooting started. A few seconds later, this is for Drummersdale, Kraut bastards. A grenade was lobbed into the prisoner's room. The scene was unspeakable. It got worse when a few of the men came up to clean the rest. A few hours later, nothing moved in the whole of the town. Sterling's men were gone. They didn't intend to hold the town. In fact, they meant for the government to take it back. That was a message and escalation for the sins of Drummersdale. When, where will it end? Well, if you do stuff like that, people are going to respond with the exact same sort of message. So, yeah. I still don't think we can take this step. Area. But you know what? I could be wrong. Do we have any planes? We don't have any planes. Okay. Oh, I'm glad I checked. Since we got some planes, though. Oh, yeah, we do have some planes. There you go. Maybe that'll help us out. Maybe. Can you uh, do something? I don't want to manually control you, but if I have to. See what you can do. Oh man, so many events. So, the photographer of two armies. After occupying in, or landing in King Edward Airport, renamed to Blackpool by the occupying resistance forces, Eddie Adams didn't have long to get his bearings. He would need to be quick and lucky if he was to bring his story back to the times. Luck happened to be on his side uh, when he spotted an encampment of resistance soldiers milling about on patrol. They raised their weapons, but seeing as the camera happily invited him to talk. Three of them on patrol of three different ideologies. A little man with the upper class accent introduced himself as William, and proudly announced that he was fighting for the Queen's return. A giant of a man, Jack followed with a gruff uh, pronouncement of his socialist ideals. The last one, Henry, barely 16, paraded ideas of liberty, ideas which he had never truly experienced. Despite their different views, all three of the men left heartily with each other, brothers in the resistance. This would be a winning story, Eddie knew, with the common bond of anti-fascism breaking credibility or creating an unlikely friendship. As they all posed for the picture, Jack embraced the other two, smiles gleaming on the faces of all three. Eddie snapped the shot. Not a moment after, a deafening crack echoed across the field, and Eddie was thrown backwards. Bleeding, Eddie looked for his camera and found that it was miraculously unbroken. Looking towards the subject of his last photos, he thought he found that they were anything but. Eddie knew that if he ever got his pictures developed, it would show the last moments of the three men on the ground. Near the bodies, Eddie waited for an eternity for the battle to end. It seemed like the government forces had won, and a group of men faced mean-faced soldiers approached them. Him. Eddie knew that this was the end and that he would be killed here and now, that is, until they asked him if they could take their picture. Eddie rapidly nodded, waiting as the three collaborators took the spots right where William, Jack, and Henry had once stood. Smile for the camera! Man, this, these events, they're just kind of like, wow. Oh, crap, you know? <laughs> 
Schnikes. I'm not sure what they say in England, but... Oh. A bit of a tricky spot, I guess. Oh, what is that? This is... Do we... Is that a convoy? Did we sink a convoy, maybe? Maybe. We got a lot of war support, though. We did! We sank an enemy convoy. Wow, we actually did something with ourselves. That's a, a better than I thought would happen. And actually, I really want to get rid of this division because it is a good infantry division. We're attacking with garbage. Well, they're not garbage, but they're 10 combat with. All they are light infantry, so... Anything that we could do to help ourselves out would be good. We're probably going to attack in Manchester next. Manchester? Manchester. Manchester. Algerian Crest is Cool. It's happy 1964, my friends. It is... It is quite the year, not going to lie. It is quite the year. Help the attack. We're in circle, in circle Liverpool. Yeah, what would if I did this? Oh, we have happy guys here. Yeah. Because I want you guys to do this too. It's not great, but it is what it is. Because Liverpool will be surrounded eventually. Good. We beat them up before they could do anything about that. We still got a good amount of factories, which is really nice, actually. Hey, Liverpool. A little bit of lag. Alright, cool, whatever. Take him out, take him out. Leads, huh? And that division is toast. Let our guys get a little more planning bonus. We're doing very well in this war so far. New divisions and basic training. Oh, we need to do that. We need to do that. Um, I prefer infantry divisions, to be honest with you. Military divisions, they're okay. Actually, just make one. Because when this war ends, I'm going to convert the militia divisions into a regular good infantry divisions. You want to have a very, very good army, not a massive army, just a very, very good one. I'm going to cut these guys off too. See what happens. Like normal. Good! Yeah, that division cannot hold up to us. That's looking pretty bad for the rebellious people here. Oh no! Good. Oh no, they want to be free. Oh, well, if not, we can always get them and do that. Don't let them move. If we can't get to that tile just yet, that's a Actually, you're winning. Okay, we've surrounded Leeds anyways. I'm going to assume that's how you pronounce Leeds. Maybe it's just an English thing, I don't know. I'm going to assume that's Leeds. Hey, we even got a hole too, nice. Good job, guys. And we got some basic motorized equipment. It only took us until 1964. Great. Anti-air stuff? Sure, why not? Land doctor stuff? No, we don't believe in that stuff. Uh, get some more guns, I guess, for now. Updated? Cool. And we're also trying to build a battleship, which happened in 1973, which we're probably not going to get there, but that's okay. That's A-okay. Land doctrine? Nah, we don't need that. <laughs> hey, look, Leeds, just go ahead, guys. You, you guys are doing great. Durham. Oh, so that's like Durham, like, North Carolina. Oh, that makes sense. Go ahead, guys. I don't think they'll really be able to send up to us anymore. Oh, we actually had military spending decreased. Okay, well, decrease it more then. Why not? I mean, it's only costing us over a billion. Uh, deficit. Yeah, we're all going to lower civilian spending eventually. And maybe even military spending. Newcastle's on the front lines. Oh, Northern England. I've never been. I would like to go someday. Just bugger right on in. You can get some air XP too. Nice. If that's the case, I'm going to go and do this. Get you guys to here. Hey, we got 11 planes, not 10. We actually made one. We actually took a convoy. Beautiful. We actually got some naval XP. That's the first time I've ever gotten to sink an enemy ship in this mod so far. Very cool. Now, once I make that, that's fine. But once that's done, make some civilian factories. Ah, uh, the government prevails in the English Civil War. A light cannot go out, it can only dim. A barbaric loss. We're effed. We're all effed. Paul's raucous swearing radiated through the table as Matilda sat uncomfortably, wedged between Jeffries and Olivia, and with her head in her hands. All we have our hope is that the Americans will get us out of here as fast as possible, and the Yanks haven't been the most dependable hope for us. Someone at the table piped up. Hope isn't dead yet. Skinner. Skinner is a remnant and communist. Someone else snarled. The table immediately erupted into chaos. Olivia lifted her head out of her hands on the edge of tears. Matilda glanced around the table, silently observing the utter nightmare. She spent so long fighting. So long. What was... Was it all in vain as she looked at Olivia again? She was more upset than she had ever seemed. Matilda leaned back into her seat as Jeffrey stood up and his nostrils fled. Quiet, for God's sakes, we're soldiers. 
not children. The table went quiet as Jeffrey sat back down in his seat. Paul spoke again quietly. The Americans, next boat is coming in Portsmouth tomorrow evening at the 8, according to the informant. And we will space 14 people. There are 12 of us, so we can make it if we're careful. Out of the corner of her eye, Matilda saw a mustached man at the back of the room just staring at the table. Matilda whispered to Jeffreys, we need to get out now. Why? He's going to call the police, Jeffreys and odds. Let's go. So, the government's victorious. And they should be. So, the forces of His Majesty's government have secured their control over England. Although some holdouts remain, the majority of the rebel units have disbanded or surrendered. Law and order has returned to the land, but the prices have been high. Thousands of English soldiers and civilians are dead. And the former workshop of the world has been reduced to rubble. It's time to rebuild, my friends. Yes, it is time to rebuild. Ah, uh, look, a promising future. I like that. The last guns have gone silent. End of the disaster. The English Civil War, a conflict which ravaged lives and tore apart centuries of peace upon a hallowed isle, has ended at last. The traitors and communists of the resistance are captured, dead or on the run and their American backers seem to have given up on attempting to assert their influence for the moment. All it cost was the blood of tens of thousands of people, that's all. Yet in the midst of this tragedy, we can yet look to the future. England has remained dependent, independent, and free of obligation to those parasites across the Atlantic. Now we can rebuild what was lost. The government, which led England for two decades, continues its guidance. With luck, this shall continue for a long time to come. And we get the end of a nightmare with all this political power. Now, we do. We should be concerned because we have a growing hunger. We lose weekly manpower and stability. Oh boy, we gotta get rid of that ASAP. Military austerity, we have uh, probably rebel. At least, you know what? I scrolled down here. Societal development is not decreasing anymore. It was decreasing for a while, I think, for poverty. I could be wrong about that, but I don't remember. The reconstruction of England. Now, there was a glitch earlier uh, that uh, this would like stay with you for the rest of the game. Hopefully, that doesn't happen, but we'll see what happens. Of course, and a barbaric escape. Matilda carried Olivia as the 12 remnants of the Brighton branch of the Resistance stumbled out of the car. They'd driven all night and gotten very little sleep. The calls of comfort and camaraderie masked the unfortunate feeling of dread in the group. They were being trapped and they knew it. As they approached the boat, isolated on the strand, the distant sounds of sirens approaching them gave pause. By the time they had reached the boat, the sound had become more distinctly more vivid. We're aft until someone is there to hold them off. Called one voice, panicking among the crowd. We need a distraction, Jeffrey said, sitting on the bow of the boat. Matilda stood there for a moment. She had come so far, so far. She looked at Olivia in her arms once more at this point on the verge of tears. She smiled confidently. I volunteer. The crowd felt to a dead silence as she passed Olivia to a nearby soldier. No, Matilda, stop. What are you doing? Doing what you would do, she said before kissing Olivia. Goodbye, darling. I'll see you in another life. Olivia was loaded onto the boat, screaming out for her Matty to stop as the boat began to drive away. Matilda looked back, a tear in her eyes, the boat pulled away. She stared at the car for a moment, got in and drove to the block, approaching the police cars. As she pulled in front of them, she imagined walking on the strand with Olivia, the sun burning in the sky, seeing her smiles as she joked and laughed, and the policemen fired their shots through the window. Uh, only through the window? He didn't like, get out of the car, please. Get out of the car. I guess this was technically a civil war, and they're fighting terrorists, but you know, whatever. <laughs> please, ma'am, step out of the car. Well, it's probably better for her to get shot in the car than at be tortured later on, so that's actually probably smart. Oh, so we got this too. Cool. And we have some liquid reserves. Only 43 million. So, uh, civilian, I don't want to hurt my budget. Budget, debt isn't inherently a bad thing. I do want to finish up that factory, but let's get it done. So, end of the disaster. We'll read the end of the nightmare as soon as we get this one. Fun. A message for Edward, Oxford Trials, meeting with Montgomery. Let's do the trials. The resistance fought in the name of the failed branch of the House of Windsor, who are part of the group that led our nation to ruin the Second World War. Perhaps it is unsurprising that they were utterly defeated. Irre or regardless, because irregardless is not a word. That's what I learned in my 11th grade English class. Regard irregardless, I don't think it's a word. We now hold many thousands of other members prisoner, and we need to do something with them. Not in London, obviously. Too many people around, and too easy for things to go wrong. Oxford is close enough that we can transport the leaders of the resistance with no issue. There, in the university grounds, ravaged by conflict, we will decide the fate of these people who would tear our country down for such petty reasons. Headless or heedless of it, their actions might open up the possibility of Germans reinvading the moment they looked out, out the way. Let them suffer justice, let it be swift in public. So, the end of a nightmare. Home, the Prime Minister of England, stared down at the list of names and neat handwriting before him. It wasn't a list of men to be rewarded, but a list of some of his former friends and colleagues who deserted to the resistance and had been captured in recent days. Using a handkerchief to rub the sweat from his eyes, the supposed most powerful man in England certainly didn't feel like it was a victory he'd presided over. Auchinleck had been captured, a man who had served his country well once and no doubt sought to do so again by his actions. Other renegades, Bella Alexander and David Sterling, were... There was no sign thus far, but he was confident that that would change. As Holm looked out of his office onto the streets of London, he noted that the majority of the citizenry would not likely know what he did for some days. The English Civil War was now over. Some of the Himmler fighters remained active, of course, a handful of the diehards and fanatics who would never accept anything but victory or death for the cause aside. Holm personally was quite willing to accommodate them on the latter option, but he had to send a notice to Montgomery on the subject. Yet despite the destruction of the resistance forces, Holm had to admit it himself that he didn't feel like a victory. 
England was in ruins. From end to end, not a village or town in that nation was unbesmirched by violence and death. People would blame him for a few years, of course, but eventually they would come to blame the man who had allowed them to rise under his very nose. Home did not know if he wanted to stick around for that. For desperate the news, he felt no joy. He just felt tired. The people need to see the leadership competent, for we have emerged victorious. Whew. Hopefully we can do something with our uh, political power. But, so the police report. At 12, Her Majesty's Most Loyal Resistance Terrace cells located and arrested. Reported by citizen Maurice Lockwood as they were seen cavorting in a bar west of Brighton and Hove. Police said, and police and army forces were able to catch a group as they boarded the boat with those captured seemingly conducting a desperate new rear guard action. After a quick interrogation to determine their guilt and involvement in civil war and various crimes against humanity, all captured were charged with treason against His Majesty and the government of England, and corresponding are the crimes. Seven summer executions were carried out with the rest of the sentence to life in prison without parole. Oh. Oh, so they didn't make it out. Uh, at least that's what it sounds like. They did not make it out. Olivia sacrificed herself for nothing. It was all for nothing. Hmm. And I say that with a, with a smile on my face as we support the government. Hmm. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Go ahead and keep training, because you guys, you subs don't take that much to do this, so. And we'll barely get any naval XP, but that's okay. Whatever. It is what it is. And we'll have the Oxford Trials. Pierre Bougiard elected as President of France. Very cool. Ah, oh, man, that picture, he does not look tired, but, man, you could tell. Leading any country, especially during wartime, has got to be very tiring. I'm kind of surprised that Hadrich has not given up yet. So, let's read the next one before we read the event. And a message for Edward. Home is the most successful Prime Minister of England has had in the, at the helm in over well two decades. A man who has united the squabbling royal party and its hardliner and reformed swings into a force to be reckoned with, whilst repairing some of the damage, strife, and corruption had, that had been done to government institutions. Yet war takes its toll on man, and civil war undoubtedly so for those whose deaths you order were once friends and colleagues, brothers in arms and compatriots. Prime Minister Douglas Holm shall be handling handing in his resignation to the king as successor is already in place in the form of that young Thatcher woman. She's smart one by any measurement, and the party will keep her in line should she let her power get to her head. There's little better time to announce such a change. So the Oxford trials. Roger Miller. Never had much of a head for politics, even when he'd gone through school, the words of the men on television had interpreted him, or interested him far less than moving upwards in his uncle's motor repair shop. But the skill to repair broken down trucks and other vehicles had been one of the things the militia leaders had looked for first and foremost, and Roger found himself drafted less than a week after the Civil War started. Now the war was over, and he found himself with his fellow militia men being asked to oversee security at the trials, which meant he was in the curious position of guarding his cell full of men he'd been shooting at not long ago. Oh, crap. Uh... He did not know how to feel about it at first, so he talked to them a little outside of giving them meals and spent most of his time wondering whether his uncle's shop was still standing. They were an odd bunch, and after several weeks of waiting for their turn to go to the trial, Roger had learned a fair bit about him. The officer had deserted with his battalion when the resistance had first risen, not for pay or even feeling with, of kinship with the resistance men, because he had lost a son in the war 20 years back and he wouldn't have gotten so good a chance of revenge again. The factory worker claimed he just wanted to get back at the man who spat down on him the day after day and ensured his father died penniless after an accident took his knee. The young militiaman, by contrast, had wanted the return of the so-called True Queen Lizzie because his family lost everything when the Germans invaded and her own father had treated the Jewish people well. One by one, they were taken away. Roger didn't ask anyone about their fates. Soon, for soon, the next batch of prisoners were put into the cell he guarded, and he'd listen to their stories all over again. There will be thousands more like them. A public service announcement, or PSA. Radio in a household living room. With all these demands and shortages of coal, it's up to the householder to econ economize. A woman to her husband on the couch, but what are we going to put in that grate this winter? Uh, tea leaves? The radio said, don't, now don't get excited, ma'am, madam. The man acts surprised. Blimey, who's that? And the radio said, only me. What I was going to say was the government was asking you to do two things. First, order your coal as soon as possible and take 10% in yolk or anthracite. But woman asks or says, but what does coke make a really good, great fire? Does coke make really, make a really great fire? I can't speak, sorry. Radio said, yes. If you go the right way about it, catch the fireplace. You light the fire in the ordinary way with coal, using small lumps. A fire is magically built while these instru instructions are relayed. Thank you. When it's going well, add some coke or anthracite to the front or the back. Oh, thank you. And remember to keep the underside clear up actually so get a good draft. So there you are. So remember, order it now and remember to get a 10% coke or anthracite. Good burning, nice day. And man said, oi, oi, what about a radio? We want to hear about it hear about here now. The radio reappearing. Sorry, sorry, I forgot. But remember, order now, 10% coke or anthracite. You gotta love commercials, even after a post-war post -war period. Uh, I'm gonna say, invest more money. I, um, what do you think? Should I lower my... I think we should probably lower our construction budget, maybe. You know what, maybe we'll lower our civilian budget for now. Actually, let's lower civilian spending. Okay, now our deficit's looking better. I want to get the money that we make. Not to pay out the debt yet. Uh, what happened to the GDP? Why is it negative? Why? I know we're in a reconstruction period. I know we're basically in a depression era, but why... 
We had positive growth for a while there. If I do that, it does nothing, basically. A message for Edward, but then we shall do a meeting with Montgomery. But now Montgomery has been our foremost military commander for some decades now. Is If one ignores his failure in the face of the Reich, the man has defeated every foe to come against him, including a good number of his former colleagues in the Civil War. Speaking of which, his presence in that most dreadful conflict is what enabled us to win, and we ought to reward him handsomely. Parade some com commemorative medals for the solid soldiery and a few memor memorials to start off, but he also must be informed of the change in leadership that is soon to occur. He might be one of the old guard, but Mac Montgomery values stability as much as the next man. As such, we'll know who will do the right thing. So, a meeting with the king. The meeting of the Prime Minister of England with His Majesty King Edward VIII is one observed by none but the two men in question. At first it seemed almost normal to the men and women serving in the Buckingham Palace, until the meeting kept going. There was no raised voices or items thrown that the staff could hear, but what was supposed to have been an hour-long meeting went on for three, then four, then five before the Prime Minister finally exited the room. Curiously, the first thing His Majesty did afterwards was not call all or any senior politicians or noteworthy men of military backgrounds, but instead a rather obscure young politician by the name of Margaret Thatcher, who was summoned for a meeting to the palace the next day. What to have a fall? Hmm. Should I lower my construction? I kind of want to, but I don't think so. How, how do I get more growth? I want more growth. I know, it's bad. But you know, even if we have this, the reconstruction of England, like, we're losing stability, but the monthly poverty change is not going down. I'm not sure why. Oh, no. Oh, wait. It's stagnant. Minus 0.75. Okay, that makes a little more sense then. Because it looks like it's steady, but if it goes down to minus 40, then we'll know that's actually going down. But it doesn't seem like it really doesn't seem like it. Meeting with Montgomery, which will be the last thing we read before I do this one. Announcement for everyone. Douglas Holmes has settled the matter of succession with the moderate faction of the royal party higher ups long ago. Margaret Thatcher is bright enough to be not be not to be befuddled by the political machinations of the reformists or the brute demagogue nature of the hardliners, while also not having a power base of her own, which with she might deviate from the royal party's own goals. The moderates will have the power if they, they have earned through blood, sweat, and tears. Now it is a mere matter of informing the rest of the nation that the change of management is due. It should be fine. England has had, what, a dozen prime ministers resign by this point? It is doubtful that the person on the street will even notice. My apologies. I will remove the growing hunger, which is actually really good. And we shall end this episode with meeting Montgomery. If there ever were times where Montgomery truly felt that he lived well over seven decades upon this earth, it was when he had presided with an unwelcome surprise. Resignation, he repeated to the carefully neutral face of the Prime Minister, but Alex seemed to take it in stride as Montgomery asked, Whatever fool, I'm afraid I'm just tired, Field Marshal, Holmes responded warily. Keep the party together, and the, then the mess with those damn terrorists was hard enough. But a civil war? Some very old friends are dead, Field Marshal, worse than are soon to follow. At that, Montgomery couldn't help but grimace. He never truly liked Auchinleck, but to think of... To think of him so short-sighted that he doomed the nation over who sat upon the throne, siding with communists even, it was enough to put a man ill at ease. Well, I suppose here's little for me to say, really. Montgomery politely uttered as he, too much of himself as a politician in front of him. I'm sorry, I can't speak. It was evident why Holmes was really here then. He wanted the assurances of England's highest ranking officer that nothing untoward would interfere with whichever politician's ambition landed them in Downing Street. But perhaps Holmes had planned out that out too. Who was to succeed you then? Holmes looked surprised at the question for just a moment before his politician's mask reasserted itself. Margaret, as it happens, the most powerful man in England, simply stirred his tea as he mulled over about what he was going to say next. If he'd be so kind as to do her a favor and keep the military out of whatever mess happens after the announcement, she'd be most grateful. Montgomery nodded. Then he brightened his expression as if, if remembering something he didn't intend to mention all along. A parade, perhaps, to show our newly forged national unity? Home nodded. That will do. The military will sit and follow what will happen. So, this video's gone on long enough. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. It's kind of a long one. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, of course, and check out my Discord link in the description below. And I guess tomorrow we will see which direction we take with Margaret Thatcher. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great rest of your day!